everybody, this is Annie from Luxury Groomer, and this is Dr. Lisa Lippman, here again to talk about some of the issues that come up in grooming and how Dr. Lisa can enlighten us. Today we're talking really about what do you do when you have a dog with pre-existing conditions or current injuries? How do you approach grooming? And the first thing is to have a conversation with your groomer. Um, and we like to have conversations with vets. So Char this is Charlie here today. Charlie is a good example because Charlie has had a lifetime of some back injuries. She's got a knee injury. So Dr. Lisa, explain to us what has uh, yeah, what has happened with Charlie's back and with her knee so we can better understand the condition she has right now. Yeah, so Charlie was diagnosed with intervertebral disc disease, which is when a a uh, disc in between the vertebrae becomes compressed and can pinch on the nerves and spinal cord and can cause some difficulty walking, so what we call ataxia. If you see a dog walking kind of like they're drunk, it can cause like a hunch back. It can cause a lot of discomfort, basically um, very similar to disc disease in people. Um, she also had some previous neck injuries and she also had what was called a medial luxating patella, which is where the kneecap goes in and out, and a cranial cruciate tear, which is basically like if you watch football, akin to uh, ACL tears in, in football players. So, um, which she had surgically repaired. She's doing great now, so we want to keep it that way. Yeah, she's doing great. She does see mom over there. <laughs> she sees mom over there, and so she's going, I'm done. I just got done grooming her, actually. We're in Charlie's home. And so now that she's done, she'd rather go see mom. She doesn't know why she's on the kitchen table. But I wanted to show her as an example because this is really, really common stuff. So back injuries are really common, especially in small breeds. So groomers encounter this a lot. And what it means is that with one-on-one -on -one grooming, we can modify how I manipulate her body to make sure we don't cause further injury. Believe it or not, your groomers know quite a bit about anatomy, or they should. Um, and with the knee injury, we change how we lift the legs. We don't lift her up onto her back legs. For her back, we keep the back straight. Don't let her jump on and off of things. This is a mom's yoga mat, but when we're doing the grooming on the counter, I actually have a silicone mat with traction so that there's not slipping around. Sometimes we actually put one of those in the bathtub as well. So the biggest thing is to have a conversation with your groomer about exactly what's going on with your dog's body because they have hair, they have to be groomed, anyway, but we just want to make it as safe and comfortable as possible. And if we have our questions, we reach out to a veterinarian to give us some insight or advice. But a lot of times we do know what this stuff is, so you just want to talk to your groomer. And is there any other thing that you can say to us, advice you can, you want to, you want to come here, baby? The advice you can give a groomer if the owner doesn't say anything, but we're noticing maybe stiffness, maybe arthritis, things like that, like things that we can look for. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, just like we mentioned before, one of the things that I know that mom had started noticing when Charlie was having her back difficulties was having a hunched back. So if you see them in this posture, if you see them not want to move at all, if you see them keep their neck low, or they don't want to turn their head any which way. So always be careful about, you know, being overly aggressive or excitable about turning their head any which way because you never know, especially in little dogs who are prone to things like disc disease, either in their neck or their back. Um, other things you can do when you do move them, I would say, is to hold her. You want your hand essentially underneath her chest and to keep her level, to keep her your arm underneath her belly, so to keep her straight and to keep her back supported at all times. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it just made me think of something too. If you are doing some brushing or maintenance in between as an owner at home, you want to be aware of these things too. You want to be really conscientious about how you're lifting limbs and just think about how that adjusts their spine and their body and don't force anything, don't pull anything. And if they're a dog that maybe is a little combative for at home brushing, you don't want to let them fight too much. Maybe just let your groomer do it. A lot of times they let us do stuff that they won't let mom or dad totally do. Yeah. So if they're going to fight you really hard on certain things, especially if it's neck pulling, or pulling too much on the limbs, maybe just don't do it or keep them in a cut that they don't need brushing like that because they can just cause so much damage to themselves if they're kind of fighting you on a little brushing or, or whatever. And unfortunately, they can't speak to us and tell us that they now have a pinched nerve or something. So just listen to them. If they're fighting you or they're stiff or they're whatever, then just modify the haircut, modify the routine, whatever it is, to make sure that that's the last thing that happens, especially for something as trivial as hair or yeah. haircut. We don't want to, it can yeah. and I would cost say also, a lot more to do surgery than, yeah. <laughs> than the haircut. Yes. Would so, and I would say also, don't be afraid to bring it to the owner's attention if you do see something, you know, doesn't have to be in an alarmist way, but just let them notice 
so many of my appointments, I can say at least on a weekly basis, I see something because the groomer has noticed it and, and it's really great that they get them in then to, to us to be able to treat. So yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much as always for all your information and advice. She is our savior because if I have any strange question, I get to call her any time of the week. Yes. Uh, but I also think it's important for groomers and vets to have this tight relationship and be in communication because we do see different aspects of the dog. Like she said, the dog probably sees a groomer more often than the vet, so we might notice some, something and bring it to her attention immediately, and then she uses her expertise from there yeah. and vice versa. All right, everybody. Hope this uh, gave you some good information. We'll leave doctor, uh, links to Dr. Lisa and Luxury Groomer below, and leave your comments. Tell me what you think. Yeah. Bye. I love you. Yes, I do. Oh, my goodness.